Hey everybody, welcome to module six. Um, uh, I mean, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Sound like a broken record, I'm sorry. I am just blown away how fast this class is moving. Uh, it is amazing, it's week six. We only have two more modules before the end of the semester. Uh, this is crazy to me, right? This is super crazy. But at the same time, I gotta say, you guys are doing awesome. Um, you guys are, are sticking with it. You guys are still pushing through it. Uh, you're, you're staying up to speed. You're staying up to date. You're turning in the work on time. The work you're turning in is amazing. Uh, you guys are doing great. I know that spring is so hard. I know I've talked about this before because, you know, it's nice outside. There's all these different things competing for your attention. Uh, you guys are doing awesome with this. And so I really want to congratulate you guys and I hope to encourage you to keep doing this. Let's look at module six. Module six titled Researching the Conversation. And what this is, is we're talking about taking the ideas, the topics, the things that we're talking about, and then finding sources that validate that, back that up, prove that, expand on them. And in other words, we're researching information to, to, to go with the conversation that we're having. Um, I know that, you know, already we've given you these sources and like, hey, you know, read this and tell us what you think. And, um, uh, you know, um, you know, you can, you can build on this information, right? Well, this unit, this module asks you to start building up a little bit of a knowledge base to go with that. Uh, you know, you're going to find a topic and we're going to talk about the argumentative paper, which is the end of, this, of the unit. And you're going to build a question. You're going to find resources that help you build upon. It, right? and, and that's really what we want to focus on. So we really want to focus on that part of it. Now, one of the first uh, things that you get in this module is a description of the unit, uh, the module uh, six writing project. I'm sorry, it's not module six. Uh, it's the writing project number three. The final draft will be due on module number eight. This is a 1250 word essay in which you state a position and you back it up. And this is, and it's based on our closed theme uh, of food and society and what does it say about us. Uh, you can use the readings that we have and your own research, but you're looking to find what, some topic that we've kind of touched on or you've read about in someone else's work and really explore that. You're going to say, this is what I believe on this. You know, is it about food deserts? Is it about making food more accessible? Is it, you know, what is it might be about fast food and weight loss or whatever? You're going to take one of these areas and you're going to, you're going to state your claim and you're going to back it up, right? Uh, so you're going to get more information on this, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but I do want you to think of it in that respect, like, here's the thing I want to write about, and then let's go for it, right? And we're going to be using the sources that we find in this module to help you get there. Uh, so our first assignment is to close research theme background check, uh, reading check-in. Um, in the past, we've given you, like, hey, read one of these things and respond to it, right? You know, uh, this one's a little bit different. Uh, you could take one of the background readings, which is at the bottom of your reading list, or one of the sources that you found. And then this one is a little bit more of how does this prove the point that you're talking about? How does this show, back up, validate? How does this kind of illustrate the area that you want to address, the topic that you want to get into, right? Um, in other words, this is the first step in saying, I want this to be a source that I want to use, and here's why. And this helps me show the area that I'm going to really explore. Um, so again, this one is like the ones that we've done before and that, you know, it's just a short passage. Here's the thing that I read and here's what I got out of it. Uh, but we're really looking at this one just slightly different and like, this is how it explains, uh, the area that I'm interested in. Uh, then you go into some library instruction. Um, you know, the thing about the library, uh, databases that you have access to, uh, this is amazing resource for you. Now, uh, some of your um, some of your friends that go to other schools, USI, Purdue, wherever, they have very similar databases. This is nothing unique to Ivy Tech. But um, the the so so anyway, anything that we do here, you'll be able to take anywhere, right? You can also use this. Uh, it's a very similar format uh, to the free state library. Uh, if you go to your public library and you said, "I'm doing some research, I'm needing some help." They're going to put you on a site called inspire.net or inspire.in.gov. And uh, it's the same interface. And it's the same look, right? So databases are uh, these collections of sources within a particular topic or field or area. 
uh, genre or whatever, right? Uh, so these databases collect and curate all this information. And then the interface allows you to search for it and, and to manipulate and manage it and, and to get through it. Thing about databases are there just tons and tons and tons and tons of this stuff, right? Uh, there's just all this information in there. The, the interface helps you kind of manage that. Now, the awesome thing about the database is you don't have to worry about the source being valid. Like all the sources have been vetted in advance. All of them are real and legit and valuable. Uh, they're credible and they're believable and they're reputable. Uh, you don't have to worry about any of that. Now, you can argue the information. You can say, I, I don't believe what you're saying, but the source itself is valid. Okay, and that's the great thing about the database. If you just went out and did a Google search, you have to validate that information on your own. And that can be difficult. Uh, so you'll get some information of how to validate or how to navigate those databases. There's an exercise for you to complete on that in which you're going to find uh, two. Um, um, you're going to find a, a source. Let's see here. Is it two? Is it one? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to pick. OK, you're going to find one of those databases. OK. Um, you're going to find a source. So there's a, to a list of topics here. You pick one of these topics and then you find a source that goes with that topic. So this isn't a source that you're going to use for your argumentative paper at the end. Uh, it's an exercise in how to manage these databases. Um, and then there's some questions down here uh, that you are going to answer. And uh, th again, the thing that uh, I would really, again, want to uh, uh, impress upon you is that the sources that you find in the database are all good and val valid. You don't have to trust, you don't have to worry about if you can trust the source, okay? And I think it's a really important place for you to do some of your research. Um, then we have a discussion board. Again, you are familiar with this. Post your original one early, do your responses later, best uh, to get the best possible score, you know, three or more posts, uh, replies to people, uh, and that you spread them out over a multitude of days, okay? Um, this one, again, is uh, write initial post introducing your peers to a background reading or an article that you found for your research. So you're going to say, here's the topic that I'm interested in, and here's an article that I found that really goes with it, and explain what that is. Uh, and then you will respond to your uh, response to your uh, peers. Now, the thing about this discussion board, when you are describing the initial source, or you're, you're writing your initial post, you know, think about the fact that your audience has not read that source. They're not familiar with the source. So you do have to kind of make sure that it, you provide a complete picture of that, right? If you do that summary and you do that explanation. And then the other part of it is, is you know, not only just what area you're looking at, but why do you think this is a good source for that? Uh, and that's going to be really important because, again, your audience isn't going to necessarily have, um, isn't going to necessarily have like all the pieces that you have. Uh, they're not going to have that knowledge of that topic. They're not going to have read that article. So you want to make sure uh, that you um, that you provide enough information so that your audience is comfortable with what you're saying. Okay. Uh, your responses, there's a list of questions here that you might use. Uh, I don't think, you know, you do not need to use all of these questions, but they're things that you can use to do that kind of response. Because again, now you're looking at, hey, here's that source I saw that you want to use. Here's what I think of what I saw. Uh, and then finally, we get to the last assignment, which is the mini annotated bibliography. Uh, this is where you're going to take two of the sources that you have found uh, and that you're going to annotate them. And annotation really, uh, you know, I think that if I say write this paper, use two sources. A lot of times you go out and you find a source, you read down to you find a line you like, you copy, paste, and you're done. And you don't know what else is in this text, right? And you don't know if that one line that you have, which works for your paper or what you're trying to say, is really representative of your work. And then if somebody else came along and looked at it or took it from it or read that and say, hey, wait a minute, that's not what that means or that's not supporting your point, right? So the annotations, first off, make sure that you understand the source. They force you to stop. They force you to look through the source. They force you to really be able to say, I understand. And this is what I see and this is what it is, okay? Uh, that's the first thing. And then the second part of that is, is that really that evaluative piece. 
where you're really going through and you're saying this is why this is a valid source and this is why I think uh, I can use that. So what you're going to do is you're going to use that IV uh, tech databases. You're going to find two sources, okay? Um, and you are going to um, first off write a summary of each of them, okay? You are then going to evaluate the usefulness and relevance of it, its credibility, its balance, the different things, and then how you might be able to use it. Um, so what you will want to do is you will want to take like the MLA or APA citation, that line, and then you can just answer that right below it. Okay. Um, one of the things that I would just like to kind of wrap up on is the fact that this unit doesn't feel, this module doesn't feel really big. Um, I know it's kind of deceptive, uh, like, oh, look, there's not that many big things I got to do. And there's not, okay. But I do want to remind you that you got to stay on top of it. Uh, and that doesn't mean just blow things off, right? It will take some time to do that research. It will take time to go through and find a good source, a second source, a third source. Um, you know, find those sources that you really want to use. Uh, I would not stop at just two. Uh, I think if you're into the search and the search is going well and you're, you're having success, keep going, start building up those sources because you're going to need them next module, right? And then for your paper in the end. Uh, guys, again, continue doing the great work you're doing. If you have questions, if you need help, please make sure you're reaching out. Uh, you're emailing, and many of you are. I uh, hope I'm answering the questions for you in a timely manner. I hope that you're getting the answers that you need. Um, I hope that you guys continue the great work you're doing. I can't wait to see what you're up to. And good luck, everybody.